Legend of Korra, the sequel series to Avatar The Last Airbender, which in my opinion was a great show which had like fantastic characters, great animation, and Steve Bloom. And when you got Steve Bloom on your show, your show was gonna be automatically better by a margin. Now it wasn't all great, there was that love triangle crap from season one, but overall I thought it was a pretty good show and I thoroughly enjoyed my experience with it. But we're, today we're not here to discuss the show, at least not now, perhaps a little hate towards the future. No, what we are here to talk about is the game based on the license. Now if there's one thing that Korra has over The Last Airbender, is that it has a pretty damn good license game. And I would show the YouTube cliche of putting the game into the console, but I, I don't, it's digital only, so. Is it got awkward? Now, I've only played one Avatar game before it, and it was an alright game, but The Legend of Korra just blows that game out of the water! No pun intended. Now, just as a warning, the game takes place between season 2 and 3 of the show. There isn't a lot of spoilers in the game, but if you want to be spoiler free, this is your final warning. Let's go. The game starts off with Korra, Mako, and Bolin competing at a charity event to fix Republic City. After wrecking the team, Korra walks home by going deeper into the city, even though she could take a boat back to Air Temple Island, but whatever. It's Korra's life choices. Suddenly, an old man is in an alleyway and Korra gets kidnapped by chi blockers, or what I like to call my Saturday night hangover. Pretty much, Korra's bending has been taken away, and she's trying to figure out why chi blockers and triads are working together for this creepy old guy voiced by Steve Bloom. So the point of the game is for Korra to get her bending back and defeat Hundun. Now it's a really simple premise for a game, especially when you watch the show and you realize how shallow the game's plot is. I mean, Hundun has even less depth than Ozai. How do you do that? There really isn't much to talk about with this story, it's really standard stuff. What's really unfortunate is that Korra is the only character we see in the game. She only meets up with Mako and Bolin at the beginning and the end of the game, she talks with Jinora's spirit only once, and Asami and Tenzin don't even show up. As a fan, it's a bit disappointing not seeing the characters I love. Then again, if there was a lot of story and character development going on, we would have had a Matrix Reloaded. No one likes the Matrix Reloaded. Then again, no one likes the Matrix. Now that the story is out of the way, we can get to the gameplay, and man, this game is a lot of fun. Korra feels good to control, kinda weird she doesn't have a double jump when most characters in this genre of games do, but whatever. The gimmick to the game is Korra's bending, as she is the avatar. Water bending is great for long range combat and dealing with projectiles, but at close range it's not great for crowd control. Earthbending is the most powerful you can get, with single strong attacks being enough to wipe out a mook and a half of a triad's health. But you're a lot slower with your attack, so it's easy to get wrecked. Firebending is also fantastic, as it hits fast and hard, and great for singling out opponents. And finally, airbending. Well, its attacks are fine, it's kinda like just like super waterbending. It's when you get three tornadoes surrounding Korra that it's fantastic for crowd control. And also, the airbending scooter thing, a lot of fun. All four of these elements have their own combos and their own abilities, making Korra very versatile in what she can do. But Sombrero, this game is about Korra getting back her bending. Why are you praising her versatility when you can't have all the bending at the beginning? See, with these kinds of games, I don't think you can judge the game on your first playthrough. Hear me out. Now, Spectacle Fighters, beat em ups, they're about going through the game first so you can experience the story and get a handle for the controls as you buy upgrades for your character to improve them as a fighter. And thus, the game comes a lot more fun because you've mastered the game's controls and have upgraded the character so it becomes mastering the game. But this comes with a criticism that a lot of people bring up, and while it doesn't bother me as much as other people, in that you can't combine elements. You can only use one element at a time, meaning you can't be like Korra and use all four elements at once. Not even in the Avatar state, which, being honest, is a really big disappointment in this game. <laughs> Again, this doesn't make the game bad, it's just missed potential. But because of this missed potential, it can be interpreted as not emulating the license. Here comes that can of worms I was afraid of. License games. What do you think of when you hear that term? probably terrible games like this. But not all licensed games are like that, in fact. Some of my favorite games are licensed games. But here's the problem when you're making a licensed game. 
It has to be a good game or else every Angry Joe win pro Jared will have a field day. Two, it has to be faithful to the source material or else the fans will firebomb the studios. And three, this is an odd one, but the game has to emulate the show in some regard or else the, the critics will criticize it for not feeling or emulate the show's feel or something like that. And it happens. Trust me. Now I believe that Legend of Korra avoids the whole THIS GAME IS LICENSED, IT'S ABSOLUTE TRASH! Now I've gone ad nauseum about how much that I like this game. But, are there problems? There are. The enemy variety is honestly really poor. By the fourth level in the game, you would have already seen every enemy that this game has to offer. That's not good. The enemies you do fight are also used for the whole game, so it does feel very repetitive. On the flip side, this game is very short, so I don't feel like it becomes too much of an issue unless you do repeated playthroughs. And besides the final boss, a lot of the bosses are, while not bad, aren't really good. They're damage sponges, they take a lot of damage before they go down. And their strategies don't really change besides having attacks that are unblockable so the fight lasts longer. Another part of the game that some people have issue with is the Naga writing sections. But honestly, I wasn't bothered by them. They're challenging, and while not the deepest thing in the world, it's a fun little obstacle. That is, until combat is introduced. One section of the game is devoted to taking out not one, not two, not four, but three mega tanks. Now Korra can tank their hits and eventually take them all down, but Naga? Uh-uh. Naga can only take three hits, and then she's an ice dog. Ice polar bear dog. And the game is a little on the short side. Remember that god-awful Sniper Elite 3 video I did where I said the game was short but the levels were long despite not ever beating the first stage? The same applies here. There aren't too many levels, but those levels are longer than what is standard for the spectacle fighter genre. Now graphically and sound wise, this game's pretty strong. The music is lifted from the show and I think a few new tracks were used, and they're really good. While I will give my full dissection of the music when I get to reviewing Korra of the show, I will say the music is really enjoyable, especially the ending theme to Korra, which I think is on par with Dire Dire Docks from Super Mario 64. The graphics are really nice too. Environments are pretty simple, but they capture the show pretty good. And the character models resemble the show's characters really well. We have come far where 3D characters now resemble 2D animated shows as opposed to years ago where... Oof. Oof. I don't have much to say other than that the looks and sounds are good. Besides lack of variety and being a short game, I don't really understand the ire this game receives. It's not the greatest game in the world, but not all games should be. I do recognize that I have the bias of being a fan of the show, so I'm going to like this game to some degree, but I do believe it is an enjoyable game, even if you're not a fan of Korra. But fans of Korra are probably going to get the most enjoyment out of it. This game is two years old, so they probably already did. It's just really frustrating trying to make people understand why you think a game is good, or tell people that a game is good. I mean, some people say that this game was terrible and it is the reason why you can't trust Platinum Games anymore. That is, until Nier Automata. You'll be mine someday. And you know what? I'm done trying to do that. I'm gonna freeze myself. That's right. I'm going to freeze myself. I'm done trying to get you nerds to play good games. So, that's it. I'm done. Alright, excuse me for one second. I gotta go get something. Great way to end season one. See you all later.